Let's go, Bob. In the beginning was the word, and the word was emergence. From the oceanic depths of our mother's womb, life emerged, and it was good. Emerging from the amniotic depths of the natural world, Homo sapiens sapiens, or wise humans, revered the fruitfulness of Mother Nature, the self-evident source of all terrestrial life in which we were now submerged. Here is a statue of the Mother Goddess, worshiped at the very liminal beginning of human memory. Our brain integrates this iconic image even now, it resonates in the archetypal depths of our shared psyche, our soul, anima mundi. And here is a mother of the 80,000-year-old Khoisan tribe of Africa, descended from mitochondrial Eve. As a matter of science, every one of us alive today can trace our lineage back to the Khoisan, one tribe in all people. 70,000 years ago, the Toba supervolcano rocked the earth, blotting out the sky for years. Only a few thousand humans survived Toba. Some migrated out of Africa, leaving their motherland behind. Those who wandered furthest from the equator lost the most pigment, becoming white-skinned nomads. Many forgot their earth goddess roots. Cowering below the absence of sunlight, they began to worship sky gods. The jealous sky gods came between humans and nature. The trauma of those angry skies reverberated down through the ages with endless wars of empire. Emperors claimed their sovereignty came from above. These were dark ages. There were some, it must be said, who continued to worship fertility and earth, honoring the seasons with song and dance and talking with the plants. They were persecuted and suffered horrible deaths. Their tormentors believed they were appeasing the sky gods. The first peoples, too, still submerged in natural ways, still engaging in a participatory dance with the elements and the animals, were either slaughtered or enslaved, their homelands desecrated. The white-skinned nomads called them unredeemed savages. The split between humans and nature, between the I that thinks I am and the less than human world was enshrined by a sky god worshiper named Rene Descartes, ushering in the age of reason. Descartes dissected living dogs in the public square to prove the absence of feelings. In strange tribute, sky god worshippers filled the heavens with smoke and ash, digging up Mother Nature's bones, opening up her veins, and erecting a funeral pyre that would in time bring the world to its knees, once again threatening the lives of all but perhaps a few thousand humans. Humans industrialized warfare. Nature became the battlefield. Some even claimed that war itself was human nature. But the human psyche was not built for this. The stress of unnatural violence traumatized human beings. In fact, the use of biological agents in the trenches of World War I created a monster who later started an even bigger world war. He created factories for, for killing humans adding the smoke and ash of their blood and bones to the darkening skies of the Industrial Revolution. And then, behold, there was Trinity, which rained hell on earth in the land of the rising sun. In the August 20, 1945 issue of Time magazine, James A.G. observed that with the controlled splitting of the atom, humanity was brought inescapably into a new age in which all thoughts and things were split and far from controlled. The 11,000-year-old Holocene era died and the Anthropocene was born. America's president proclaimed, we now control the basic powers of the universe. The father of the atom bomb thought to himself, 
now I have become death. And then, and then, a miracle of flight, scientists reached outer space and gazed back for the first time on the face of Earth. They beheld her and saw that she was good. The scientist named her Gaia. The great acceleration was unrelenting. Sky god worshippers turned away from his creation, objectifying life. Pandemonium ensued. But Gaia was also unrelenting. With wave after wave of dying, she brought the super predators to heal. Human beings began experiencing Gaia's trauma as their own. Her voice emerged in the chaos that ensued. I am the one who they call life, and you have called death. I am the honored one, and I am scorned. Awaken, follow your root, which is I. In the midst of the great unraveling, from the ruins of the greater depression, mother love and grief, an ecological consciousness emerged. And behold, humanity became indigenous to Earth. The great Gyanthropocene era dawned. The 400 square mile cauldron left behind by the Toba supervolcano's hellish eruption in time was filled with, by Gaia's tears becoming what we know today as Toba Lake. It's been described by travelers as heaven on earth. From her ashes, we can build another day.